starts at just $16,295. Lumina, one great family sedan and genuine Chevrolet. See your Chevy Network dealers now. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines, but we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. For nearly 30 years, Subway has made some of the best sandwiches anywhere, like the six-inch meatball sub, only $1.69 at Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. Roseanne, weekdays at 5 on 90. Good evening, folks, and welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom, and this is the simulcast now on radio and television. Welcome to all of you on radio and the Late Late Radio Show with my partner, Elliot Forrest. On this program tonight, this part of the simulcast, we have Frank Sinatra, Jr., uh, Dr. Stuart Yudovsky. Now, I know that this man's name is not a household word, but he has conducted some research and is now uh, uh, developing treatment involving a pill which people can take which apparently removes the craving for alcohol. Now, I realize that many of you in the house tonight are just now enjoying your nightcap. This is not a problem to you. You don't have to take the pill. But for those people who know others that might need some help in, uh, in controlling alcoholism, this could be a, a step forward. Also tonight, we'll take a look at a member of the winning yacht, America Cubed, and the competition for the America's Cup. Now, the last time I did America's Cup on television was for Channel 7 Eyewitness News in New York City back in 1984. We carried one day 20 minutes of the America's Cup competition on uh, WABC-TV. And this is long before the cameras where you could see them winding the jib, you know, and, and sailing the boat. And basically, watching from a distance uh, boats racing off Newport is much the same as watching paint dry. And uh, <laughs> after about 20 minutes, uh, Michael Horowitz, my producer here, was in the booth at Channel 7 New York. He said, let's go to something else. I said, why? This is great. <laughs> and, of course, the ratings are going like this. So uh, in an effort to spice up uh, America's Cup racing, we'll talk with Annie Nelson, member of the all-female crew uh, that beat one of the favorites in the America's Cup competition. I want to talk here about a fellow who's worked at CBS now for 13 years. His name is uh, Charlie Weeks. He's our audio man here on the floor, and uh, every night he helps me with the microphone, etc., etc., etc. And uh, uh, yesterday we were here in the studio wondering where the terms Roger and Wilco came from. You know, back in the war they used the, uh, the walkie-talkies, and if you got something right, you'd say Roger. And I said, you know, why did they pick Roger? And today Charlie brought in a little thing in the dictionary that said it came from... Uh, uh, using Roger as a word for the letter R, meaning received. You know, Roger being easier to, to, to hear than received, which could get garbled. And Wilco meant we'll comply. And I, I thank him for this, for getting involved with the show, and for, uh, you know, trying to help me out in terms of, of, of getting information to me before we go on the air. However, I want him to know that it doesn't make up for last night. When I, I, I was on the way down to radio with Elliot Forrest, and we have brownies in the green room, and as I was walking in, Charlie was there, and I said, well, I think I'll have a brownie before I go to radio. And Charlie said, I just ate the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, my two favorite things about Frank Sinatra Jr., and I'll have him tell the story when he jo joins us here. Back when they started 747 service in America, many, many years ago, they wanted to do something special to dramatize the size of this airplane. So early on, American Airlines, on their legendary Flight 10 between LAX and JFK, uh, booked Mr. Sinatra and his band and a piano player in the back of a 747. This is how much fun it used to be to fly in America. And they, 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 uh, they jammed all the way back to New York City. And the only other time I saw him was the night that he uh, came home after his kidnapping uh, to his mother's house in Bel Air at 3 o'clock or 4 in the morning on a December or January night, and it was terribly, terribly cold outside. And about 3.30, Dave Chasen of the legendary Chasen's Restaurant here in Los Angeles and three enormous vans arrived uh, and set up in the street a buffet that included two whole roast turkeys, two fully roasted hams, and a, a steamer round of roast beef at 4 o'clock in the morning. And being a, uh, 
a kicker from Milwaukee. I, I had never imagined that such things could happen in the middle of the night in Hollywood, California. It was, it was a wondrous night, and uh, it's one of the reasons I've loved Chasen's Restaurant to this day. Frank Sinatra Jr. is just around the corner. I thank you all for watching, and we'll be right back after these messages. These hands can do anything, including spread germs. Washing them often is good, but it doesn't go far enough. Lysol spray with antibacterial action kills germs on surfaces, so you don't pick them up with your hands, and that helps reduce the spread of colds and infectious diarrhea. Lysol disinfectant spray. Keep your hands off germs. Yummy! My favorite fried dumplings. And soy sauce. That's okay! She uses Advanced Formula Resolve Carpet Cleaner. It even gets out greasy combination stains. I'm gonna put something in front of you, Kathleen, okay? What do you smell? I don't smell anything. That's a bad cold you got there. I have a nasal spray I want to give you. Now what do you smell? I smell orange. Yeah. This is wild. Tristan. Tristan 12-hour nasal spray. This stuff works. Cellular One is so remarkably clear that we're actually recording this commercial on it. Cellular One, the nation's number one cellular service, clear across America. When a town like Sparta, Mississippi, explodes with anger, passion, and hatred, it's the cops who feel the heat. Help! Put that thing down! Emmy winner Carol O'Connor, Academy Award nominee Howard Rollins, in the heat of the night. Weekdays at 10 on 19. USA Motor Spectacular. February 10th, 11th, and 12th for the first time downtown at Gundarina. Monsters, mud, motocross, and more. Tickets at Ticketmaster. Okay, Cleveland, does this look familiar? Well, it ought to. Be ready this year. Come to Automatic Auto Sales, where you can rent to own and reestablish your credit through a real bank. Why take the bus when you can drive for almost the same money? All you need is a steady job and proof of residency. We care about you. All our cars are warranted for 90 days or 3,000 miles at no charge. Mention this ad and get an additional $150 off the price of your car. Come to Automatic Auto Sales on Vine Street in Eastlake. Do it now. We are joined now by Frank Sinatra, Jr., not only the bearer of a very famous name, but a man of enormous talent to go with it. Sometimes the name can complicate one's life. I thank you for coming in tonight. I haven't seen you for a long, long time, and I welcome you over here to CBS. Welcome back to California, Tom. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The well, last time you were in this room, you said, or this building, it was the, or the first time was for the, uh, the uh, Jack Benny program. That's right. Long time ago. 18 years old and scared to death, literally scared to death, yeah. and Jack Benny, the, one of the great performers we've ever had took me literally by the hand. He said, pay attention, kid. <laughs> this is how it's done. He knew how to do it, he too. Just, he knew how to teach as well. He said, this is how it's done. Pay attention. What was the night like when you sang in the 747 between here and, and New York? I remember all the networks sent crews because yeah. it was this enormous airplane, and here That's is right. Frank Sinatra Jr. playing in, in the lounge in the back. With, with eight jazz musicians, yeah. right. Well, they had built in an electric piano, and I can remember the chief of maintenance for the whole airline was on that flight. And he said to me, they had to take the 7-4 out of service, send it to their maintenance base at Tulsa, Oklahoma, and keep it on the ground for five days to get the electric piano to work. Can you imagine what it cost the airline <laughs> to take a 7-4 down? But you know and what was this so... was when they were new, Tom. This is 1971, right? Yeah, but in those days, Frank, it didn't make any difference economically because the airlines at that time were more romantic. They wanted to do things. Oh, yes, remember right. they had Pong games no, upstairs? No, remember what you're talking about, Tom. That was in the day of the Civil Aeronautics Board when the fare from one city to another was regulated by the government. Right. The airlines could not undercut one another. Right. So they wanted to lure you, to fluff and puff you with service, is what it was. So they had the idea of putting in this piano, they got it to work, and they had it, and as you say, the TV networks covered it. It was a, a sideshow, you know, it was something sure. different. Sure, sure. I told everybody that night, I said, you realize from our regular program we had to give up a few pieces of music that we couldn't do tonight. We couldn't do Being Green, <laughs> The High and the Mighty, yeah, right. you know, I mean, a few songs we did have to leave out, right. you understand, but then uh, we did, uh, I wrote a song called The Night Sky for that show, okay. and then we did the other one, Come Fly With Me, and all the, all the flying songs, and everything went great until about two or three months later when the American Federation of Musicians determined that to have a piano live in the lounge of this airplane was to put a pianist out of work, a union member. Therefore, every oh. flight that had this must-have-a-standby piano player 
on board. And that, <laughs> when that happened, <laughs> the airlines decided they'd go back to music through the earphones yeah, at that yeah. point. Right. By the way, what was the crowd like? I mean, was there a lot of, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. They were in a nightclub, yeah. you know. When, they went, when the thing about it was is that that whole night, they had seats there facing this little lounge area. And on the floor, there was a man sitting there like this. The whole time watching this and whatnot, and finally I said to the purser on the flight, a pretty hostess, and I said, who's that one man sitting there? She said, he is an FAA inspector that the Department of Transportation put on the flight. And I said, well, what is he looking so sour about yeah, him? Yeah. And I went and I met him later on, and uh, he said to Frank, he said, I'm sorry to have to sit there, I have to. And I said, what, is something wrong? You look like you just lost your best friend. He said, no, everybody else is having a good time and I can't even have a drink. Oh. <laughs> and that's why he was sitting there like this the whole time. When I saw you the first time, it was, it was when you came home from being kidnapped. I remember that they sneaked you into your mom's house, I believe, in the trunk of a Bel Air that patrol car. That was the car. only way I could get by yeah. the press that night. And I remember uh, uh, at the time, there, there, were, there were allegations afterwards that you were somehow involved in the kidnapping, which was later knocked down. Mm -hmm. But you told a story about, about sitting in the courtroom and holding your head up. Not letting people see you with your head down, but, you know, looking everybody right in the eye like, listen, I'm in, in control of this situation, and, and I'm okay. And that you were, you were watching the, the trial or the appearance of Heidi Fleiss in court some years later back in 1993, and that you had noticed her doing the same thing, that, that, that you caught her looking down, and, you, and, 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 and that you felt that she shouldn't do that. Is, I mean, is that a correct story? That's absolutely correct. When Heidi got into all of her trouble, Tom, I didn't know her. I had never heard of her name before. Right. And one night I was in my room at home. And by the way, not trying to get a laugh because there's none intended here, most people in Los Angeles didn't know who she I'm was. I'm sure she didn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the fact of the matter is that I was at home, I was carrying a heavy box of stuff one night, and I have one of those large screen hyper video televisions. Sure. I happened to turn around, the news was on, and just as I faced the TV, I could see this young girl, and I saw this look on her face. I hadn't seen that look in 30 years since it was on my face, mm -hmm. when I was 19, all right? I met you the first time. You were a newscaster here, as you say, at Channel, Channel 5, 5 in yeah. Los Angeles, and it was a night just like tonight. It was pouring rain, and I came into LAX, and you were at the airport, and you asked me to talk and make a statement to everybody that night. Right. That was the first time I ever saw you, other than on Channel 5 sure. at the time. And uh, I arranged to meet Heidi Fleiss. I felt so bad about this. Up to that time, I thought she'd done pretty well. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible thing, Tom, to be tried in the media. How apropos that is tonight, that you and I sit here talking, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right, as in view of what's happening right now around us. Unfortunately... And has been for almost a year now. Right, but unfortunately, it's like... It seems that they're trying to make these real-life things an entertainment. Mm -hmm. When I was getting dressed to come down to do your show tonight, I was making something in the kitchen, and the TV was on, and there was a television program on called Hard Copy. Yes, sir. And the moderator of the show said, in just a moment, we're going to show you the real Marsha Clark, the, uh, the prosecutor. Well, as the, if we haven't seen the real Marsha Clark. The fact Clark. was, then this woman came on and she said, and here are the secrets that Marsha doesn't want you to know. And I figured, they're trying to make this some kind of a big game, like it's, a, it's an entertainment program, and it, this is a very serious, this is a, this is a, a capital offense we're, we're talking, talking about. We're talking about two people who are dead and murdered, uh -huh, and a and man who is on trial for who, freedom for the rest of his life. Uh, or, worse. or worse. Oh, no, they, no, they decided they, no won't go for, they won't go for murder one, right. But the fact is, all I'm saying is that I got to thinking about it, that um, the reason why I should tell you this, and if you're a little flattered, I hope you are, the reason why I agreed to come on your show tonight is because I've watched you ever since I met you 32 years ago. You don't play those games. Well, you I'm still, you still have you. responsibility, Tom. You see, I don't think uh, what Marsha Clark's secrets are are any of anybody's business. I was, I was. You know what it turned out to be yeah, after what was the it? commercial yeah. break? Pictures of her when she was in high school in an interview with her high school, somebody who went to school yeah. with her. Yeah. It's called Jeez. the hype. It's, these, it's, are, these are secrets, of but course the fact not. is they're trying to make it an entertainment event, and this is serious business here. And I can't, uh, you know, with all due respect, I, I, I can remember when television started. My parents had the first TV in the San Fernando Valley in 1947. Right? Yeah. 
I can remember that TV had a Channel 1 on it. All That's right. right. All right. And for a long time, the only channel you could get was Channel 5. That's right. Yeah. KTLA was the first station on in Los Angeles. But to get the network shows, we used to get on the Dumont television That's network. Right. We used That's to right. see Jackie Gleason. Yeah. And then the networks came in in full force. But the, the business of this irresponsibility, Tom, but don't get, too, bothers me. don't get too yeah. far away from Heidi Fleiss and the fact that, I, that somehow you were able to connect with her and tell her, don't hang I your her out. I sought her out. I said, look, I want to talk to you. And she said, uh, what about? I said, I want to give you something. And she said, a little cautiously, she said, well, what? I said, a survival kit, kid. Yeah. <laughs> a survival kit. Where you are, I have been. She said, what do you mean? And I said, I've been tried in the press, too. You understand, Tom, that during that time, as you just mentioned yourself, the accusation was made that I had planned my own kidnapping That's so correct. I could be famous and whatnot. Here I was, 19 years old, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. And I was, uh, as I used to tell people, I was so damn dumb. I mean, I couldn't have found Dolly Parton in a phone booth, you know? <laughs> and here I am planning my own kidnapping, is what they said at the time. When that by the way, by the way, put that in the act. That's not yeah. bad. When that, when that subterfuge didn't work, then they said that I had willfully gone with the people who kidnapped me because I was a closet homosexual, and was physically attracted to these people. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I remember so all this, of that. Right. Well, you were in the news, news media sure, at the time. Sure. But the fact was, I still thought it would be best to keep some dignity about this. And when I saw this kid Heidi Fleiss, who was on t being tried in the press sure. at the time. I said, you did good until this one day you lost your dignity. Don't do that. Look him right in the eye. No, I mean, just be, be a lady. Be yourself. Be a lady like that. In, in all the pain that a man like O.J. Simpson has gone through now, and I don't know whether he's guilty or not, Tom. I'm not going to speculate. Nor do I. I'm not on the jury. If I were on the jury, I'd make a decision when the time came, you know? But O.J. has never lost his dignity. Let me ask you here, you were talking about the 747, and I know that you have an, an, an intense interest in aviation. I read a story about you in Gentleman's Quarter in which you're talking with a person about the development of jet aircraft from the 707 and the DC-8 right up until the present 767, 77. Just like you, I spend a lot of time in them. I know. <laughs> Here's what bothers me. Like the 747's got four motors, right? And the 767 has only got two motors. Why is two motors as good as four? Have you ever examined the two engines on modern mm -hmm. airplanes, No, Tom? sir. No, sir. All I the know is that... The 767 is now an old airplane. This year comes the 777. Do you remember when the jumbo jets started in 1970? Yes, sir. They used to do yeah. an ad. They'd take the nacelle, the round opening at the front of the engine, and they'd get a little stewardess with her uniform and her hat on, and they'd have her stand up in the nacelle oh, inside of the, engine, the engine, sure. Without sure. bumping her head on the top, right? Yeah. Because the engine was about six feet top to right? from the diameter of the nacelle, right? Yeah. The 777 that takes service this year, the engine nacelles are 12 feet in diameter. I think one engine has something like 80,000 pounds of thrust or more than a whole squadron of jet fighters had 30 years ago. So, in other words, the two engines are, in terms of, of, of deliverable Incredible. power, the, the equal of the four motors. Yes, and they make half the smog, half the noise, and they burn a third the fuel. It's like automobiles. Okay, which, I, I, that's you, it. you've set my mind at ease because that's I've always thought is. four motors would be a lot better than two. Well, you, you, you are the United States Secret Service. Air mm -hmm. Force One, the president's airplane, they wanted to put a DC-10 on and everything. The United States Secret Service will not allow the president of the United States to fly in any plane that has fewer than four engines for that reason. I want to tell you something, Frank. It's good enough for him. It's good enough for me. <laughs> we'll be right back with Frank Sinatra, Jr. And all of you on the toll-free highway at 800-95-CBS-TV. We'll be right back after these messages. at and It's true. More than 13 million AT&T True Rewards members enjoy points, good for free AT&T minutes, frequent flyer miles, even rewards from Disney. Your true voice. What am I doing here with you? You're my brother. It's your genetic obligation to help me. Right, right, right. So, with 150 horsepower standard, this M must really move. 
Oh, the test driving was a blast. The handling, the power. Well, that's why you get a Pontiac. And I like brakes are standard, and price-wise, the Camry and Accord can't touch the Grand Am. Really? Yep, I researched it. Well, I'd say you know what you're doing. Thank you. So what am I doing here? Helping me pick out a color. Color? Yeah. AT&T. It's true. AT&T True Voice makes your calls sound so clear and close, it's even patented. In fact, four out of five MCI and Sprint customers prefer it. Your True Voice. When an unsolved case comes back... These were just girls, little girls. Can Detective Phillips... I have never... ...stop a killer from walking... ...hurt anybody! ...under suspicion Friday. The biggest game in football is the Super Bowl, and the biggest used car sale in the USA is Super Sale 95 at your regional Mullinac Superstores. A sale too big for just one day. Shop Super Saturday from 9 to 9. Sunday, our pregame sale is from 11 to 4. That's 17 big hours with 500, 1,000, up to $2,500 off our already low sale prices. We've rounded up hundreds of fresh traded used cars and trucks, and everything goes during Super Sale 95. Don't miss the fun and excitement of the biggest used car event of the season this weekend at all regional Mullinac Superstores. Bridges, reaching across the Cuyahoga, in a city reaching for the future. We can all feel it, a new spirit and pride that's moving Cleveland forward. And just as the bridges connect us to each other, Cleveland is connected to a vision of something even greater. 19 News understands that vision, and we want to share it with you. 19 News, a new choice for a new Cleveland. More selection, more savings, and unbeatable service. Only one of the country's largest furniture retailers has the buying power to give you all this and more. At Value City Furniture, it's all priced to sell. Save over $200 on your choice of these Cranler Designer sofas. Now priced to sell only $398 each. Plus your choice of this five-piece solid pine dinette or buffet and hutch. Not $700, now priced to sell only $498 each. So for the best home furnishing values in America, guaranteed, nobody is priced to sell lower than Value City Furniture. You. A more active you. For a livelier you. An energetic you. And a healthier you. Here's something simple that you can do. Check out what's in the food you eat. The new food label. Use it. You'll feel great every time you do. Check it out. We're back with Frank Sinatra, Jr., and here's Sharon on the line from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Sharon. Good evening, and welcome to the uh, simulcast. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Here's Frank Sinatra, Jr. He's right here. Yeah, hi, Frank. Uh, Hello. This is, hi. This is Sharon that, used to, that came to your show all the time in Las Vegas. Yes, Sharon. How are you? Fine. It's been a long time. We miss you in Las Vegas. Well, I miss Las Vegas, too, Sharon, I'll tell you. But uh, just between you and I here, we are just about to make a new deal up there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, and, and I missed what it was, excuse me, dear, that Sharon did for your show in Las Vegas. She used to come to hear oh, my orchestra. Oh, came to see it. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. And where are you going to be playing? Well, we, I can't talk about that just yet, and because the deal isn't finalized, but we're like this far away right now, like, as like, of today, well, as a matter of fact. What would happen if you talked about it? You know, I think you it guys always... It. I think it would jinx really? it. Really? You know, yeah. I mean, they don't, they don't come in and put a bullet through your head or something oh, like that. Oh, no. I just uh, call it a superstition. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Sharon, I'm glad you called. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank you. Speaking of um, Las Vegas, there was a story about when you were trying to find an opening act some years back, and you called the late Red Fox. Remember that? That was on a television show we made up there. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Fox was at the... You have to understand, the late Red Fox, Tom, he had a disease... He had his own personal Kino window at the Las Vegas Hilton, <laughs> right? Yeah. And Fox, really, I mean, $300 a ticket. Oh, you're you ever kidding. Play, did you ever play Kino? Oh, sure. You go to yeah. Las Vegas, sure. you know. And one morning, we had a cancellation on this. You had a cancellation 10 minutes before you, you do the videotape, right? 10 minutes before, somebody isn't going to come. You get on the phones real fast and, and start hustling. Hustling. Yeah. And we called Fox, and it's about 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, I was taping four shows a day, and I said, Fox, wake up. He said, who is this? And I said, it's Francis. It's Francis, hey, baby, what's happening? I said, I am over here. Are you free today? He said, no, I am free, but I'm reasonable. What's on your mind? <laughs> yeah, right. 
I said, I'm at the Dunes Hotel, the now defunct Dunes Hotel, and we're taping a television show. I need a guest. Will you come over? He says, well, let me see now. You got any food over there? I said, we can get some. He said, you got any liquor? I said, yeah. He said, well, I said, well all right, I'll be right over. I can stagger that far. And he came in and stayed for four shows <laughs> yeah, that day. Yeah. He was right in the middle of Sanford and Son at that time. Sure, the enormously popular right, NBC series. Right. And he said, you know that your initials and mine are the same now, F.S.? I said, F.S.? That's right. I didn't think about that. He said, I got it on side of my hat band. Yeah, Fred I Sanford. Thought it was a, I thought it was something special. He said, then I found out it just means for sweating. It's a sweat <laughs> band, so F.S. is for sweating. Fox was brilliant. Oh, funny, funny I miss man. him. I really miss him. When he died, I figured I've really lost a friend. He helped me out that day. We would have had to shut down production for four shows. And you know in television what that means. Eats up you know? the money. At me. And also, the people upstairs get very unhappy with you. You know, it's your fault when that happens. We are with Frank Sinatra, Jr. Here's Andrew on the toll-free from uh, New York, New York. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Good. I'm fine, Andrew. How you be? Uh, pretty good. Frank, good. I just want to say, uh, my girlfriend and I saw you and your father over at Radio City, and it was a fantastic show. I'm very glad you enjoyed it, sir. Yeah, I, I like those programs. Like, New York City, of course, is Sinatra Town. Yeah, it was, it was a fantastic show. Uh, I was just wondering, if you hadn't gone into the field of music, uh, what would you have done with your life? I really couldn't answer you. Honestly, I really wouldn't know. It was, I was trained in music. It was the only thing I ever knew how to do, you know. I mean, uh, uh, I tease people. They wanted me to be in movies. They wanted me to play Indiana Jones, but they couldn't teach me how to use the whip. You know, I, no, I, that was all I ever knew how to do. And is that, is that something you always wanted to do? Did you ever aspire to do anything other than music? I had the notion at one point, Tom, of being an attorney, being a physician, sure. things like that. Sure. But I wasn't smart enough, you know. I, so I became a thick-skulled musician instead. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Andrew, I'm glad you called. Thanks. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. All right. You know that by making that decision, you placed yourself in a position where obvious comparisons were made, and that those comparisons, I'm sure, have brought you over the course of your life some pain. Uh, Tom, this is... Uh, that's the gentlest way I know of putting it. All right, a very diplomatic way. That's what, that's what I mean. You still have some kind of responsibility for journalism on television. But all I can tell you is, how can it be... Uh, I, I once entertained our troops during the war in Vietnam. All right? Mm -hmm. I had left Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand, to fly to Tan Sanut Air Force Base in what was then Saigon. Mm -hmm. That morning in my hotel at Bangkok, Thailand, a man called me at 0600 hours. He said, is your name Sinatra? And I said, yes, sir. He said, is your... He reads me my serial number. He says, your serial... Yeah. I said, yeah. He said, General Stillwell is waiting for you at military headquarters at Mac Thai, Military Assistance mm -hmm. Command, Thailand. Mm -hmm. 0615, a staff car drives me, military headquarters, and I, re I meet at that time... Um, Major General, two-star general, Richard G. Stillwell. Yeah. yeah, I know the name. It was in the papers. He was one of the top commanders in Vietnam, as I recall. I, later, yeah. yeah. But I went in and I said, General, uh, what can he said, uh, Mr. Sinatra, these are your orders. And they gave my orders. My show was being airlifted to Tan Sanut. And I said, General Stillwell. I said, that's a very familiar name. He said, well, uh, yeah. And I said, are you, are you related to Vinegar Joe Stillwell? Yeah. of World War II, the man who built the Burma Road? Yeah, that's he said, that was my father. So if Vinegar Joe Stillwell, the man that, that, that fought the Imperial Japanese all across China, if his son could become a major general, and uh, did you ever see General Eisenhower, uh, gen the President Eisenhower's son, uh, he does, uh, every so often you see him on television. His son is a general. And uh, things like that, it seems to me that... Uh, the training might be something worthwhile. Somebody asked me there, does, do, does it bother you, Frank, that, that people say that you sound when you sing so much like Frank Sinatra? Why wouldn't you? Well, the point is this, though, Tom. I have never met Noel Blank, the son of the late Mel Blank. I have. But uh, Noel Blank has been taught to do all the famous voices that Mel Blank did all, all those years right. so that Absolutely. it wouldn't end. That's right. You know what I mean? Uh, Noel Blank now can carry on as Bugs Bunny and all those great voices that Mel Blank, uh, and I mean this literally, immortalized. You know what I mean? You remember when Mel Blank died, they had a photograph of all the drawings of Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny all in a line like this. 
Oh, yeah, they were. And it said, speechless. There was a microphone yeah, with nobody yeah, standing. Yeah. It said, speechless, yeah. because Mel Blanc had died. But the, 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 that, that, that's all, folks. Uh, <laughs> I always think of that, but Noel Blanc can carry on with that. He does now. He does the, the voices for that. And uh, this it seems to me that the training should be a positive thing. You are correct. There have been comparisons like that, but how can we stop human nature? Human nature will forever be human nature. And I keep thinking about um, my position is not as bad as a lot of people's, Tom. Every so often these past weeks, and you know so well because of your participation in television, you see photographs of the two little children that O.J. Simpson and Nicole Brown Simpson had. Can you imagine growing up as one of those kids now? Think of what their lives in the future are going to be. Soon they'll be teenagers, then they'll be adults. Think of their lives. Back for a few more moments with Frank Sinatra Jr. right after these messages. From today on, it will be a lot easier for everyone in America to stay in touch. Because now MCI introduces new friends and family. A 25% savings on every call automatically when you spend just $10 a month. In fact, with new friends and family, you'll always save over AT&T's best program. Always. New friends and family. MCI customers are invited to join, and so is everyone else. So call us. He craves that taste. That big, bold, cranberry taste. That one-of-a-kind ocean spray taste. Introducing Tidy Scoop with Dust Trap, a revolutionary new ingredient that pours so clean, it's going to leave all those other scooping fillers in the dust. Make it tidy all the time. Thursday, CBS devotes an entire night of television to violence in America. See the heartbreak, meet the heroes, and share the hope. I fight for the hearts and minds of the young people. Join Ed Bradley, Dan Rather, and Mike Wallace in the killing fields of America, Thursday. Bad boys who prey on the elderly. The victim died. I'm Chuck Norris for the retirement plan. What if I told you I was a Texas Ranger? Well, that'd be the last thing you ever said. An old New Walker Saturday. January. You go blind. March. You can see again. Hey, Jim Daly. What's for the outfit? Getting ready for Metro Toyota Super Bowl sale. We're kicking off the new year with Super Bowl size savings. 95 Camry, zero down on only $289 per month with full power. 95 Corollas, up to $1,800 off. Nobody but nobody can beat these deals. Sounds great, but why the outfit? My only defense against a mob like this coming in for this sale. Metro Toyota Super Bowl sale. But please, go easy on Jim. Intermission, the show that asks, how much do you really know about the silver screen? Brought to you by Hershey Hugs. It's the same, and it's different. It's hugs. Hershey's Hugs. Mini Hershey's Kisses hugged by white chocolate. Hugs, get it? P.S. Hugs also come with almonds. In this 1985 hit, things got hairy for Michael J. Fox. What's the name of this film about a teenager who suddenly transformed into a star? On our 10-point scale, this question has a difficulty rating of 3. How does the almond get into Hershey's Kisses with almonds? Little Hershey's Kisses with almonds. Big chocolate taste. Michael J. Fox was really a sheep in wolf's clothing in Teen Wolf. Need money for a new car? Ohio Auto Credit can help. If you can answer yes to these three questions, you are on your way to a new car or truck. Can you afford a minimum down payment? Do you have a job or steady income? Do you have an immediate need for a car today? In less than four hours from receipt of your application, you'll be on your way. So don't delay. Operators are on duty 24 hours a day to answer your questions. Call Ohio Auto Credit Help now. 1-800-393-CREDIT. 1-800-393-CREDIT. Because your credit is not as bad as you think purpose the O.J. Simpson trial uh, here in, uh, in Los Angeles.
Uh, Michelle now in Riverview, Michigan. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question for Frank. Well, now's the time to ask it, Michelle. Okay, I love the standard so much, not just for the music and the orchestration, but for the lyrics. Yes. Do you think that we'll ever have songs like that again? And I, think, I think you have them now, and they're just harder to find. Uh, look for songs written by Anthony Newley, by Leslie Brickus, and uh, those are both British. Look for songs written by an American whose name is David Frischberg, and songs written by another American, also from New York, whose name is Rupert Holmes. Um, look for songs written by Paul Williams, and you will find those same messages right now. We still have some good writers like that. Okay, and then lastly, do you have any good Sammy Kahn stories, and did you know him? I knew Sammy Kahn from the time I was in knee pants, oh, Michelle. He was a very close friend of my family's, and I was with him just before his death about a year ago. He died at the age of 79 or 80. As Sammy Kahn was the greatest parody writer for all the songs. He probably, in his life, wrote 20 parody lyrics to my way and every one of them for a different occasion. He wrote parodies for, uh, for Don Rickles and, and everyone. But this is a man who, um, he had one lyric every time I think of Sammy Kahn. And in, in the 1960 film, High Time, the Blake Edwards movie that starred Bing Crosby, when Bing, as an adult, never got to go to college. He goes through college with all the college kids. And there was a song in that picture called The Second Time Around. Love is lovelier the second time? The second time, time yeah. around, and Sammy Kahn wrote, the one line is, it's that second time you hear your love song sung. Makes you think, perhaps, that love, like youth, is wasted on the young. When he quoted George Bernard Shaw there, with one of the most elegant and yet perfect lyrics I've ever heard. That's my favorite Sammy Kahn story. Oh, thank you. Look for those songs. You'll find them, hon. Great. I'm glad you called, Michelle. Thanks. I remember uh, uh, Khan came one night, we did the, the show at NBC, we did all night in 1975 to start the marking of the Bicentennial. And about 3.30 in the morning, he and Julie Stein walked into Rockefeller Center. All Back the good people were busy, huh? And, uh, yeah, and <clears throat> they did 45 minutes, and it was, it was miraculous. He you did what the, songs they wrote together, those guys? Oh, man. But they, he did the parodies of My Way, and uh, he did... Uh, he did a song which was called Everything's Coming Up Roses. That's right. But, it, but in a previous lifetime, it was called I'm Betwixt, I'm Between. It was for a completely different show, and it didn't make it, so they put it in the trunk, and with the time came, it, they, they take it out. The yeah. very, very famous George Ira Gershwin standard, The Man I Love, yeah. was in three shows before it became a hit. Yeah. All right? They had it in three different programs before it finally clicked. So everybody, you know, you believe in something. Um, Sammy Kahn wrote the greatest parodies in the world. There was one time when my father was on the road with, uh, with Hitler's kid, as he calls him, with Rickles, right? <laughs> with Don Rickles. Sammy wrote a parody, and when I was rehearsing it, I was conducting it, and I was looking at the lyrics, and I was laughing. One of the lines was, Don hasn't been so mesmerized since he saw King Kong circumcised. <laughs> This is Sammy Kahn's sense of humor. Very funny, know. man. Huh? You, you notice I haven't asked you about your father. I wanted to ask you about you. I need to ask whatever you want. I'd like to ask you one question about, sure. about Frank Sinatra. How is he? He's what? fine. Okay. He's just fine. Yeah. Every, every we, time he takes a few weeks off, everybody thinks he's dying. I have had so many phone calls in the last month saying, is it true your father's retiring? He's not working anymore? And I said, no, he's on vacation. Because I just got today on the fax machine came a whole list of dates for 1995. Mm -hmm. I keep pushing him, Tom, personally, and I speak this to you as friend to friend. You and I have known each other for 32 years, yes, all right? I am pushing him to keep going because of the fact that when you, when you hang it up and you're sitting there watching the grass grow, that gray matter in here is going to turn to cheese no question. as far as I'm concerned. No question. There's no reason to quit going, or to keep going once I you quit. I cannot imagine, unless you are physically disabled, you know what I mean? Sure. I can't imagine retiring like that. And I say to him all the time, you're too old an athlete, Pop. You've got to get in there and fight. Sometimes at night on the stage, 
he is struggling, and he struggles. And that's okay, by he the way. He struggles when we are 79 years old, it's going to happen. But then another night, he gets in there, and he is breathing fire. Nails it, huh? You remember, remember Bur Burgess Meredith in the Rocky movies? Sure, he said, sure. you could become a very dangerous bison, right? <laughs> he gets up there, and he's breathing free turns, and looks at me, and I give him this, fight, fight. When I give him that fist, get in there and fight, champ, good, fight. Good, you know, he good. was trained as a fighter. And I am pushing him to keep going because I believe that's going to keep him alive. Now, now right. I speak to you, Tom, as I'm speaking as a son who wants to perpetuate his father's life as long as he can. And I think anybody, uh, that man that in the, in the GQ article you talked about, he had one line that hit me pretty hard. He said, Frank Sinatra Jr. is going through what every son is going through. He's watching his father grow old. And that's, I, uh, you know, I'd like to impose the George Burns rule. You said tonight when the show started, you said, well, I'm just getting older. You have quoted the George Burns rule, right? He yeah. says, how wonderful it is to get older without ever getting old. That's, that's the Burns corollary of aging. It's great to see you, my friend. Welcome back to California, hey, Tom. Welcome. You're always welcome here. Thank, Thank you, Frank. You. Okay. We'll continue here with uh, Annie Nelson and uh, boating. <laughs> <laughs> what a segue, huh? <laughs> Dancing through the raindrops. Now these messages on CBS. Can't be sure about where you stand. Can't be sure about what you plan. But you can be sure you can raise your hand. You can be. Sure to be dry. You can be. Sure to be dry. Sure Solid has the most effective wetness fighting ingredient you can buy. So you can be sure to be dry. You can't be sure you can meet the demand. You can't be sure about where you land. You can be sure you can raise your hand. You can be sure to be dry. You can be sure to be dry. When you're the eyes and ears of a million people, you can't let your stomach get in the way. So I carry Snickers. Roasted peanuts, milk chocolate, caramel. Snickers satisfies. When you have a cold, a smart way to get medicine is little by little throughout the day. But this is a little extreme for a cold. That's why there's contact. These tiny time bills work fast, then keep releasing medicine for 12 hours, like an IV. Contact. Relief that's fast. Relief that lasts. These hands can do anything, including spread germs. Washing them often is good, but it doesn't go far enough. Lysol spray with antibacterial action kills germs on surfaces, so you don't pick them up with your hands, and that helps reduce the spread of colds and infectious diarrhea. Lysol disinfectant spray. Keep your hands off germs. Yummy! My favorite, fried dumplings. And soy sauce. That's okay! She uses Advanced Formula Resolve Carpet Cleaner. It even gets out greasy combination stains. My dad has been my dentist since my first tooth has come in. And this is the first toothpaste that he's ever sent me. This is Tartar Control Mentadent, the most complete Tartar Control toothpaste. It's Tartar Control. It has the fluoride, baking soda, and peroxide that my dad believes in. Yeah, you asked me, are you using the Mentadent? Yes, Dad. Tartar Control Mentadent helps you brush away plaque on teeth around the gum line and helps stop tartar before it forms. It leaves you with a very clean, refreshing feeling. Tartar Control Mentadent. It has everything. Tonight we fill up a New York City pothole with old jokes. Plus, <laughs> Jim Carrey cracks up and the lovely Tia Carrera. Beautiful! Get live with CBS on Prodigy, the nation's most popular online service. Go behind the scenes of The Late Late Show with Tom Snyder. Talk with Tom and his guests online. Tell us what you think. Get program information. Even take a special Tom Snyder trivia quiz. To order Prodigy, call 1-800-PRODIGY and ask for the CBS offer today. You know, finding the right pair of eyeglasses is a tough thing. At LensCrafters, I've got everything I need to help someone find a pair of eyeglasses that they'll really love. Whether it's lightweight lenses, comfortable fitting frames, it could be a specific shape, color, or certain price. Whatever my customers need. Oh, no, that's a better fit. Yeah. And we're LensCrafters. The glasses are ready in about an hour, so my customers go home happy. Much lighter than I thought. If I've made it easier to find the right pair, then I'm happy to. LensCrafters, helping people see better, one hour at a time. In the continuing battle of the sexes, a major victory for females. Last week, the all-female team on the yacht America Cubed beat the venerable Dennis Conner and his stars and stripes. The team is seen here in an earlier race. It happened in the first round of the America's Cup competition in San Diego. That's where Annie Nelson joins us from tonight. 
She is a member of that all-female winning team. Annie, thanks for coming on. Welcome to our program. Uh, all-female by accident or by design? By design. Why? Um, Bill Cook wanted to show the world that the America's Cup is more about design and technology rather than the sexes or um, any gender that's going to win the race. I'll get to design in a second, but let me ask you a, a layman's question here. I mean, because we know so much of Dennis Conner and we're aware of his past accomplishments in America's Cup competition. Because America Cubed beat Stars and Stripes, does that mean that they are now finished, or was this just a preliminary competition? No, Tom, the races have just begun. We have the Defender Selection Series called the Citizen Cup, which started um, in January, just a, a week ago. And we finished with round robin one. We still have quite a few more round robins before we whittled it down to two boats. Right. We're, there are three right now in the Defender Series. Um, they'll get down to two boats, and then eventually there'll only be one that will go on to race in the America's Cup. And the winner of our series will go against the winner of the Louis Vuitton series, which is the Challengers. And there's seven teams over there vying for that one spot, too. So then you could lose a race and still be in the competition? Is that what you're saying to me? Absolutely. Okay. Um, the three teams are racing against each other in each round robin. Right now the points are very little. Um, each a win in the last race, um, round robins was worth one point. Next okay. time it'll be worth two, then four, then seven, and then you go on, and it's the best five out of nine, and and so on. So, and so right on now and the so races forth. mean more of a tuning up session right now, and figuring out how to make your boat go fast. And um, after a while, we'll get into where the points really count. So it's, it'll just progressively get more important. Now, your husband is a competitor. He works for another crew, doesn't he? He's involved with another boat. That's right. Um, That's he a little unusual, isn't it? 95. A little unusual, isn't it? It's very unusual. <laughs> um, it's, it's very different. Uh, it's never been done before. In fact, last week he raced on Pac 95's yacht, Young America as a tactician navigator type person and I was navigating on our team so husband and wife racing against each other we made a little bit of history there too and are you sworn to loyalty ever do you have to take a loyalty oath every time you leave for home at night or how does that go I signed a confidentiality agreement when I signed on with the team and everybody does that when they join a team so Bruce has also been around for three campaigns before he was with Dennis Connor stars and stripes mm -hmm. team Back in Australia, when we won the cup, he's been on. A, he's been a designer for Dennis for the past three times. This is his first time breaking away from that, and obviously, it's my first time doing it. So, I've known the rules because I've been around it, and you just don't speak about the unspeakable. You don't tell each I got other what Macy's doesn't are. tell Gimbel's. Annie, thanks for coming on. Good luck in future competitions. Thank you. All right, bye bye now. Annie Nelson, uh, yacht woman from uh, from San Diego, California and a victor in preliminary trials for the America's Cup. Back to talk about new alcoholism drugs next. Uh, not drugs that cause it, drugs that help to get rid of it. We'll be right back after these messages. What a night. This is one thoughtful car. Its air conditioner's CFC free refrigerant won't deplete the ozone. And it doesn't use a lot of gas. Get to know the all-new Geo Metro. shouldn't take long. We just wanted to let you know. Geo Metro is the lowest priced car around that comes with two airbags. The all new Geo Metro. Doesn't cost a lot and it has two airbags. Chew on this. Now when you can't brush after meals, there's a great new Trident flavor. New Strawberry Breeze with NutraSweet. Helps your mouth fight cavities with a refreshing fruit taste. So when you can't brush, chew on this. New Trident Strawberry Breeze. <laughs> Only candy made with the refreshing, tart, and sweet taste of Ocean Spray. All natural fruit waves. When you're thirsty for a great candy. We have everything here. This is a full-service catering company, and this building can create anything for anybody. We can do a special event. We can do a corporate function. We can do a social function. You can entrust us with your daughter's wedding or any anniversary for your parents, the 50th anniversary, whatever might be important to you. What are the successful points of a party? Service, product, 
ambiance. Order anything here at the cafe, and you'll be assured of one thing. Light-tasting, delicious food, because I'm cooking with something new. Crisco Natural Blend. A blend of pure canola and vegetable oils that reflects today's light living. With only one gram of saturated fat, I thought the leading blend was light. But this is lighter in color and taste. So bring in a healthy appetite. And remember, light taste is your order of the day. Crisco Natural Blend. Because cooks who know, trust Crisco. Women of Worth, brought to you by L'Oreal. Nancy Brinker's tragedy inspired her fight for women's health. More after this. Before you color your hair, stop and think. What if you could protect your hair as you color? Now you can, with New Excellence Cream from L'Oreal. Because Excellence is a cream, it doesn't drip. It even protects. And Excellence Cream really covers gray. What I love is the color, rich and healthy. New Excellence Cream. Does your hair color do all that? New Excellence, the protective cream colorant from L'Oreal. Think about it. When her sister Susan died of breast cancer, Nancy Brinker was determined to help find a cure. She founded the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation, and it's become the fourth largest funding organization for breast cancer research in the country. Nancy Brinker, another woman of worth, brought to you by L'Oreal. Maybe new hope for America's 11 million alcoholics. It's a new pill approved by the FDA that stops the craving for alcohol. Joining us now to explain how this works is Dr. Stuart Yudofsky, the Chief of Psychiatry at Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas. Doctor, good evening and thanks for coming on with us tonight. Good evening, Tom. I said earlier that you, you, you developed this pill. I may have been incorrect there, but you are, you are uh, I believe, pres prescribing it for patients and, and, and observing what it does at the present time. Yes, uh, some excellent scientists from Yale and from University of Pennsylvania tested a medication that had existed for many years, naltrexone, that was useful for people who had uh, opiate addiction, including heroin addiction, mm -hmm. and they have tried it to reduce the craving in people who can't give up alcohol, despite many attempts at trying through programs to give up alcohol, and they found it to be useful and effective. All right. Now, without going into a lot of medical technology here, mm -hmm. what does this do in the brain to reduce the craving that people have for alcohol? What happens? When one drinks a drink of alcohol, it sets off in the brain something called natural opiates. Those are the natural chemicals in the brain that make people feel good. Uh, we call them euphorians. And what this does, this drug does, naltrexone, it's an opiate antagonist. So it reduces the euphoric effects of alcohol. And what would happen if you were taking naltrexone and you had a drink? Uh, you take the drink, and this is what's happened in the research, and there isn't a desire to take another drink in mm -hmm. many patients. So, I mean, would, would people then figure, well, listen, you know, I only, want, I only want to have two drinks tonight, so what I'll do is I'll pop a couple of naltrexones before going down to the diner, and, and, and then just go down there and have one and, and go home and not get loaded. No, that isn't how it should be used. It should I'm be not used. saying it should be used, but you know how, the, how people think, Doctor. Well, I, I don't think it will work in that way. Uh, it'll work if they take it on a regular basis. And what happens, Tom, is when people who have problems with alcohol, which I think is an illness, they take one drink and they just can't stop. They go on and drink until they get intoxicated or get into trouble. Right. What, when people have this illness, if they take one of these pills a day on a regular basis, for many individuals, not all, it will reduce the craving for alcohol and they won't have to drink. Will they have to take the pill for the rest of their lives? I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I know some people who are on nicotine gum, you know, uh, for, for uh, 10 years now. I and I know others who kick the nicotine gum by buying a pack of camels, you know, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I think many individuals for whom this medication works will have to take it for the rest of their lives, along with other types of treatments like AA or supportive psychotherapy. Oh, so then, so then the, the drug itself would not replace 12-step programs, AA, the Betty Ford Clinic, stuff like that? Well, I don't think so, but as you know, there are a great number of people for whom AA does not work or the Betty Ford Clinic does not work, even right. though these are effective programs. And those are the individuals who can be greatly benefited by this innovation. And what about the addictive proprieties of this drug? Do, does it's, it have, have an addictive uh, uh, nature to it at all? None whatsoever. It's just the opposite. It blocks the addictive 
properties of many other drugs, not only alcohol, but opiates. If someone were on this medication and were to take heroin, it would have no euphoric effect, or we call it no reinforcing potential. So it is an excellent drug to uh, give up other medications. It has no addictive potential at all. And side effects? Well, it has some side effects, uh, but they are mild, and compared to the side effects of alcohol, uh, they are non-dangerous. Al alcohol has a little side effect, doesn't it? <laughs> Terrible, terrible side effects. Uh, it's uh, responsible for 20% of all the admissions to hospitals and has side effects uh, affecting the brain dangerously and the liver. The effects of this new medication, naltrexone, are some nausea in about 10% of the people and some diarrhea. But most of the people tolerate it very well with very few side effects. And I would assume this is available by prescription. It's available by prescription. And it, of course, since it is not addictive, it's not a narcotic, one can get it from uh, every physician, and they don't have to have special prescription forms. I appreciate your time tonight, Doctor. I look forward to uh, watching uh, further studies on this, and I appreciate your being with us. Well, my pleasure, Tom. Thank you. All right. You. Thank you, sir. Good night. Bye-bye. Uh, Dr. Stuart Yudofsky from Houston, Texas, and a new drug which could be very helpful in helping folks battle alcoholism. Back to wrap it up for late on Wednesday, early on Thursday. My God, there's less to do this week than we have already done. This is a good thing. We'll be right back. How do I like my steak? How do I like my steak? Bold. Eye-opening. Spicy. It gets you here, and it gets you right here. A1 Bold. Yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Original A1 and A1 Bold. They're how steak is done. This is a square inch. A wheat thin is the most real food to deliciousness you can get in a square inch. The most genuine toastiness. The most crunchiness. The most munchiness. Wheat thins. The most taste you can get in a square inch. At my school, you can't make mistakes. I get hungry, I reach for Snickers. Roasted peanuts, milk chocolate, caramel. Snickers satisfied. This bowl has no automatic toilet cleaner. Ugh. This one has Clorox automatic toilet cleaner. Drop it in your tank. It's like cleaning with the power of Clorox bleach every time you flush. Which would you choose? Clorox automatic. I recently joined AT&T for their basic service. Then I decided to analyze what I was paying for long distance. So I lay down there and I said to myself, Joyce, yes? why are you paying America's highest rate to AT&T when you could save 25% on every call by joining MCI's new friends and family? So I took my advice and joined. Then I said, thanks, Joyce, and you're welcome. But call me Dr. Brothers. New friends and family. When you spend just $10 a month, you save 25% on every call. My brother, Larry, hates anything new. He still hasn't bought a color TV. It's a fad. <laughs> so I hear for a limited time, Burger King's got this bacon cheddar double cheeseburger. Larry, I said, it's time to try something new. <laughs> it's two flame brawl burgers. You already love that. It has 75% more beef than the Big Mac. Top of cheddar cheese and sizzling bacon. New, but a good thing. It comes with fries and a drink, all for $2.99. <laughs> so he tries it. The next day, he's got his hair parted on the other side. Burger King, get your burgers worth... Al Rally here at Rally's, where we specialize in drive through yeah. It's faster! Rally's is dedicated to the preparation of our hot, fresh, juicy, and delicious burgers, fries, and other great foods. We believe what the world needs is better, fast food, prepared fresh and delivered quickly. Two drive throughs much faster! Uh, and if you love hamburgers but didn't drive, walk! Run! It's faster! Get a hot, fresh, delicious, and fast Rally burger made to order. Just 79 cents. Rally's, twice as good, twice as fast. Recently graduated and still no job? Take an early retirement from your employer? Looking for a better job? If you think you have to be pushy to be successful in the car business, think again. Bob Morris Pontiac and Victory Chevrolet are hiring for our next sales training class, which will start soon. Learn car sales the 90s way, with professional training from our general managers. Also, we pay a weekly salary while you're in training. Sales at our dealerships are up 30% over 93. Stop by or call just to talk about a career in sales consulting. Bob Morris Pontiac. In North Ridgeville. Victory Chevrolet. In Amherst, Ohio. I asked the doctor if it's okay to have a cocktail. He says, as long as you're not dependent. I said, I'm not till after midnight. <laughs> Drive safely on the way home. Back tomorrow night, same time, same station. Thank you all for watching, and sleep tight, America. Good night, everybody.
Later tonight, O.J.'s injuries. Can they convince the jury? We'll hear from the experts on the defense opening, plus a gathering at Auschwitz, live coverage on CBS News up to the minute. They're the best. Vince Gill, Pam Tillis, the Pointer Sisters, and more. Host Clint Black and Travis Strick bring you the best of country Friday. This is CBS.